Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About That, a Union University podcast. This week, I have a co-host guest. His name is Joe Ball. Many of you know Joe, but he joins the conversation this week because his good friend, Noah Simpson, is our guest. You are going to be so encouraged by Noah, his honesty, his transparency, his willingness to share his journey with us and where he is today since he's graduated from Union. All right. Thanks always for listening. Sit back. Enjoy the show. We appreciate you guys so very much. All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Guess what, you guys? You're in for a really fun treat today because we have a guest co-host in the house welcome back to the studio joe ball yep happy to be here friend (laughs) my first time co-hosting a podcast and (laughs) if anyone knows me i love interrupting people and asking people to talk more about things like that so podcast is let's talk about it so let's do it so yeah let's do it okay this is really um it's special it's sweet it's fun it's Um, exciting it's challenging this conversation today Um, so I think we're going to cover it all and that's a good thing I'm I I believe that we'll have moments of seriousness and then I think really quick we'll have moments of humor and fun and I'm counting on the two of you guys to do this today for our listeners so sit down everybody get ready buckle up here we go our guest today Noah Joe, tell us what you want people to know about Noah, and then we're going to let Noah introduce himself, whatever it is he wants the listeners to know about himself. Yeah, so our our guest today is Noah Simpson, Uh, more than anything a good friend of mine, but one of those uh, students around here who graduated last year, really grew a lot in his time at Union, a strong leader, and a really good friend. So even last week we heard from Dylan Runyon's and um, Noah's a good friend of Dylan. So yeah, you guys are in for a treat. So there's going to be probably some giggles here and <laughs> maybe some, maybe so. some stories shared, <laughs> but it'll be fun time. <laughs> All right, Noah, welcome to the show. What do you want people to know about you outside of what Joe just said? Well, first off, thank you, thank you for having me on here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about doing this. I mean, I've been a part of Union for I graduated – this past year I've been here for four years but I think like like what Joe said we're really good friends um, and you're definitely gonna hear some giggles laughs fun stories and some hard hard times stuff that he's walked through walked through um, with me yeah and then even even like talking about Dylan last week <coughs> excuse me um, just like me and our friendship how it's grown and changed throughout um, my time at Union and then mm. graduating now so yeah I don't think I know that you and Dylan were friends Oh, we're big friends. We, uh, we've had lots of laughs, lots of giggles. So if he's listening to this, man, Dylan, you know what I'm talking about. We've had lots of fun times. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, tell us, give us some geographical context. I think people find it fascinating. Like, where are you from? How did you find Union? Briefly give us that background and what was your major? And then we'll dive into, like, the four years that you were here. No, for sure. I am a Jackson born and raised um, through and through. I grew up here just outside of Jackson, probably like Humboldt, Tennessee, which yeah. is even smaller than Jackson, if you can believe it. Well, and Humboldt is known for, do you guys even know? What strawberry Festival. Oh, yeah. there yeah. we strawberry strawberries. Festival. I think they import we the strawberries in, year. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the kind of thing that you're like, Does do guys like think about that? I know that that's a big deal in the girl world, but I'm very impressed. Of course, you know yeah. that it's a... Uh, known for strawberry festival it's perfect small town southern america event so anyway Mm -hmm. okay so that's where you're from yeah no so grew up there um been around jackson for most like for as long as i can remember and then i was homeschooled through the eighth grade and then went to high school in ninth grade um and that was awesome i loved being homeschooled but uh mom told me it was time to get out of the house and she booted me out so i couldn't stay in my pajamas till yeah. 12 o'clock so. yeah did you always know that you wanted to come to union i know being a local a local guy that can be tricky because some people are like oh no heavens no i'm not going to union or they're like i don't know I'll, I'll give it a chance where were you in that um how you felt about it 
Um, I definitely was one of those people. I definitely was just like, the union's definitely not the place I'm going to come <laughs> to from Jackson. I'm going to go somewhere else. Yeah. And my first option was the military. I yeah. was just like, I'm just going to enlist. Um, and then I was just like, I'm going to try to get my, um, get an ROTC scholarship. Cause that's mm-hmm. what a lot of my friends were doing, like Tad and Cameron. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my really big, my first option was to go to the Air Force Academy, mm. but I missed my, uh, um, letter, of, letter of recommendation from mm. a Senator. Um, oh. by like a couple of months so oh, I couldn't wow. get there but I had I did the whole interview process had oh, like wow. a two or three hour interview the day after Christmas oh my um, gosh my I senior didn't know this. yeah it was it was crazy um I was how in, scary was that it was terrifying <laughs> this lady's like I'm from North Carolina it was like eight o'clock so it was like seven my time and she was just like asked me all these like detailed and hard questions oh, um, and I just had to like give them back to her I was just like I didn't know what was happening so wow I th- think one of the things you know right now students are going through the process of college searches Mm -hmm. right now we have our scholars of excellence weekend happening at union and we're asking these 17 year olds all these like deep questions and i don't i'm having a bit of flashback from just being a teenager and having to like try to figure out what you can do with the rest of your life right noah air force was kind of his dream right we all had those dreams and stuff but um yeah i'm just thinking about like 17 year olds right Mm -hmm. now sitting down with someone from the the government and being Mm -hmm. asked deep questions Mm -mm. it's wild i'll tell you one of the funniest questions i got asked was um which is actually one of the first she asked me if i made my bed Uh, every day and i was like absolutely my mom my mom was that honest was that an honest answer absolutely (laughs) to this day i can't leave my house without making my bed good it's just one thing i have to do well i'm not going to say it because i don't know it but there's some somebody out there says that like good leaders start by making their bed every mm-hmm. day or something like that so there's truth to that so true i don't do anything else like eat breakfast or anything else but i make my bed <laughs> <laughs> hey good for you okay so so what shifted after this whole interview process with them clearly that didn't work out mm-hmm. were you how devastated were you were you so like how did you feel about that i was i mean i was like oh man like that that sucks yeah. um but at the same time i was just like i really still want to try to go do something mm. with the with the air force um so i tried to do rtc um but by that time it was too late for me to do rtc and then i was like well i'm just gonna enlist i'm just gonna go and enlist and then go from there but then i think i think like mom told me she's like well let's just take a tour of union you know <laughs> and i was just like okay fine whatever i'm not gonna like it um <laughs> whatever so we came for a tour at union and the thing that drew me here was the lunchroom kobo oh stop listen it. and li- this is before it's been redone this was the old kobo guys and i let me tell you it's like your grandmother's kitchen basically <laughs> yes and envision I, that everyone i loved it i literally got here and was just like can i go get a second plate like i was like <laughs> and they were like yes you can and i was just like this is incredible so i got like two three four plates of just like different food and i was like this is amazing. <laughs> and and my mom was like, you know, they have this everywhere, right? And I was like, no, not like here. This oh is incredible. Gosh. So shout out to them. They do a great job. Who'd have thunk? Mm-hmm. Who'd have thunk? Okay, so this is your senior year, like uh-huh. spring semester? Yes. Oh, senior wow. Senior year, spring semester. So it's like late in yeah. the ball game. Yeah. Late in the ball game. Okay, so clearly this tour, this day was successful for you. Did you know right away after that day with us, like I'm I'm coming here or what? what happens next? I honestly forget what happened next. There was a lot going on at this time in my life, but like, I just remember liking it so much and then everything else just like falling apart, you know, mm-hmm. and just being like, all right, let me, let me try to, let me do this, you know? And I remember Evan Holt, mm-hmm. he came here the year before me and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll come. Um, and so I remember Robbie Graves was actually one of them who convinced me to come here and help me out with scholarships and everything, which was huge. Um, and that was, I think that was the point. I, I really think it was like beginning of the summer where I really mm. was like, okay, I'm gonna come to Union. Wow. Um, like I remember for my high school, like PowerPoint about where I was gonna be going, it was like Union. Like I just put Union just cause I was like, ah, <laughs> yeah. whatever, I'll put that as a safety yeah. safety net. Right. Um, but then ended up actually happening and loving it. Okay, so did you know coming in what you were gonna major in? Um, yes. So. When I came in, I was just like, I really wanted to have like an engineering degree, and that's mm-hmm. what I got, that's what I majored in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also really wanted to be a pilot still. Mm-hmm. Um, and I told myself, if I get a pilot, if I get my pilot license first, I will never come back and get my engineering degree, because right. it's super difficult. Right. And everyone from all my classmates, everyone's in it now, they, they know it's difficult. Right. Um, 
so I got that degree, and now I'm enrolled at Nashville Airport getting my mm. pilot license. Listen, so, are you an it. overachiever? Because I'm highly impressed by all of this right now. Because <laughs> I'm like, engineering alone at Union, oh my word. I walk hard. by those classrooms, and I'm like, I have no idea what you people are even saying. But you did it. Mm-hmm. And they call yeah. it the pit, right? Yeah. It's like, just, yeah. it's like they get consumed in there, yeah. and these guys come out, and they, they go in, and they come out, and they've developed a robot, right? Yeah. Or yeah. they're <laughs> developing something for an airplane, or Listen. we have this 3D printing thing here at Union that's incredible, and it's like mm. they're just printing these buildings, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and I'm like, wow, I read a book for yeah, class. Exactly. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yes, like yay for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yay for we you. To, we're like, stuff there, engineering, you get to create stuff. You yeah. know, I like Dr. Pingan's done a great job, and the whole department's done a really good job at getting that 3D print um, set up where it, where it is today. Because yeah. when I came in, it wasn't, wasn't that way, but yeah. they've done a great job of doing that. Well, I'm really proud of you. Um, very impressed by by who you are and, and what you've done. But let's talk about these four years. Let's get into... I don't know, whatever you want to talk about, the good, the bad, the ugly, the hopeful, the horrible, the Mm -hmm. wonderful, whatever. Um, What was the transition like coming from high school into this freshman year? What was going on in your life? What, where were you? So when I graduated high school, I was going through a really difficult time with my parents getting divorced. Um, So I came in to Union um, I think, what was it, beginning of August I moved in, being late to welcome week because mm. I had to go to my older stepbrother's, like, Army graduation in mm-hmm. Knoxville. So I came back there late um, and then moved in. Um, but I think, go, come, like, the transition from that summer before coming here um, and then coming here was just, like, in the midst of moving out of my, like, childhood house. Mm. Um, so it was a really difficult time of going home each weekend. Mm. Um and then coming back and just like living two lives. It was just like one weekend or like a Saturday I go wash clothes because I want to go home, right? And then I come back here and it's like I got all my hard classes, but also want to try to invest time into union here. Um, so that was a really like really hard and difficult time and transition um, that I've almost kind of forgotten mm-hmm. up to this point because it's just so far in the past now. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, oh, that, that happened, you mm-hmm. know? Um, but like I am grateful for those times now. You know, I can see how the Lord's present provision over my life Mm -hmm. um really worked um and just like his hand in it which is awesome which is incredible because you know four years ago i couldn't have said that yeah so yeah talk talk to us about community talk to us about because it listen it is hard i don't care what anybody says i don't care how excited (laughs) somebody is i don't care how scared somebody is transitioning to college is very overwhelming from an academic standpoint from who are my friends to spiritual growth to just everything is being kind of sorted out everything is being settled again or beginning to figure out like who am i and who am i becoming and do i even like myself and then you take in all that stuff your whole the you know the the 18 years of your life like what do i do with all of this there's so much change taking place and everybody's just walking around with a smile on their face or not but how did you how did you navigate through some of these this harder season of adjustment and what what who were the people that came alongside you what what did this look like because it's not easy and yours yours was not easy yeah um Honestly, there's there's a lot of people that I c- can say that came along came alongside me. But one of the first people was Dylan Runyon's. He was one of the first people I opened up like to my story to, um, and we just like hit it off as a friendship um, immediately. Mm-hmm. And then like guys like Nathan, Dylan again, and then Charlie Skinner. Like those guys, like those are my core group of guys here. And even even guys like Noah Leaf and Dave. And there's so many different guys that I could name. Um, they just kind of like they know who they are, you know. Yeah. Um, I think like that community, um, even in the engineering world was with like Nathan and Dylan and those guys, they, they helped me through like engineering in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely think like coming here and finding like a Frisbee team, which was like the Jacks Mm -hmm. was huge for me. I Mm -hmm. came here and just fell in love with it coming out of like high school where like, you're kind of like, you're like on top of the you're the best of the best, a senior in high school, and then you come to college and you're like, oh, you're the worst again, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, it was kind of a good feeling just to be like, oh, I'm just kind of a 
a name and a face at this point, just trying to see what I can do. But those guys accepted me in right away, hit it off with them, and it was just so much fun. Yeah. I loved every moment I got to play on the Jacks. No, no, give us some, like, time on friend group, because I think, you know, there may be some, like, teenage guys thinking about college listening to this or some moms who are listening and are like, what is coll- what's, like, a typical college night going to look like? And so you've mentioned your friend group. You had great friends. You're involved with a lot of things on campus. Um, you're involved with Frisbee, with their, with their Jacks team. So kind of summarize maybe in, like, one to two minutes <laughs> Like what? What's it like to live on a college campus, small campus? You know everybody. Everybody knows you. Yeah. And maybe some fun things that kind of come along with that. No, for sure. I mean, coming from Jackson, I knew the Jackson area, but I didn't know like around Union. You know, and like they call Union like a Union bubble, and that's kind of like what it is. Um, you kind of just hit it off with a bunch of different people, and everyone's just like out and doing stuff. Um, I remember like we would play. Um, volleyball in like the bowl gym for I mean from 7 p.m. after dinner to 11 o'clock when it closed Mm. so what time were y'all doing homework that's probably (laughs) um we didn't (laughs) just kind of tried to wing (laughs) it we tried to wake up early just freshman year though right yeah I got blessed with a great schedule freshman year I didn't have a class until 12 so I just did everything in the morning which wasn't really helpful for me because then I would just (laughs) sleep until 11 and try to get it done until 12 but um Every yeah. mother listening to this right now is going, that is a terrible idea. <laughs> it's like, but that's what they do. It, that's yeah, that's what they do. It is a terrible <laughs> idea. But did it work? It kind of. It yeah. did. We, we got out. Um, but no, I'd always say, like, wherever you go, like, either there's a lot of places on campus that you can hang out with people. Um, you just run into them, and then you just hit it off with people. Everyone's super friendly. So it's an experience I had here. Mm, I love it. Okay. Um, you've painted a really good picture of – of everything that we've talked about what can you identify anything that you uh want to share there's lots of difficult there's lots of hard times in these four years it's not always easy um you don't always get blessed with a great schedule sometimes (laughs) friendships and community change or they're challenged or life circumstances are hard again i'll go back to those four years are difficult Mm -hmm. Um, spiritually they're difficult academically I guarantee you you had moments where you're like this is hard I don't know if I want to do engineering anymore I don't even like engineering anymore what are you what do you want to share that is that was hard for you in these four years Hmm. I definitely think the schooling aspect of it was it, it just piled on um, so at this, at this time I was, and I say piled on cause like the root, a lot of this stuff was the divorce was the, um, trying to find where I fit in to either friend groups with this new family, this new dynamic. Cause this was so totally new. Um, so I think like the root of it was the divorce trying to figure out, I mean, the family situation. And then also like the friend situation, how do I, how do I share my story? How do I talk about it? How do I get help for, for like from it? Um, but then I think, and then we get to the school portion of it. That was just difficult. You know, everyone knows engineering is hard and everything. And I spent, I think I spent an entire winter term trying to get out of engineering. Mm. I went like to a test. I went to the Focaccio Center. Um, and I was just like, listen, I need to get out of this. I need you to show <laughs> me a way for me to get out of this. Um, and they were like, well, here, take this test. Um, it'll like, it was not going to tell you what to do, but it'll like show you what your strengths are. And like, Of course, engineering was like one of the top ones on there. And Mm -hmm. I was like, well, that's just a little (laughs) disappointing. So, Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, so that that piled on. And then the schoolwork from that was just very difficult. Yeah. Were you plugged in in church? Mm -hmm. Talk about your spiritual life in these four years. Yeah. So I was actually going to the church I'd been to growing up in Mm -hmm. Jackson. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that church, I loved it. But it started like... um, kind of run out of like young people my age mm-hmm. um and like i was like i don't know the community i'm finding here is not the community that like um i'm needing anymore you yeah. know like i'm growing and then like the one person that was there was my youth pastor drew he he helped me through a lot of hard times even in like high school and everything mm-hmm. um but then he, well, he told me he was leaving mm-hmm. um i think it was like a summer into my junior year mm-hmm. and i was like it might be time to change churches mm-hmm. um because i just I wasn't getting anything out from it there, and I, I needed community at that point. I yeah. needed to share my story. I needed to do that. Um, and so I went and found Fellowship Bible Church. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it is. Um, and then I fell in love with it. Like, Michael Winstead was the pastor. He started there, and then um, got, got connected with a bunch of different people there. 
And I'll also say I, that's that's about when I re- started reaching out to Joe um, was that same summer, which he helped me through a lot of things. So Look at you, Joe. Yeah, Joe is a big part of my community here at Union University. The kind of where Noah and I's friendship really started um, during that season, and, uh, and then we had the COVID shutdown. I don't want to bring oh, up that bad word, but this is this is the time so this frame is, we're talking so about. So the, yeah. the 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 fun time frame was you know everything shuts down, um, and you know students are going home. Thankfully, we had Jackson students here. Yeah. I, I didn't know how to survive unless I was around people. That's yeah. just kind of who I am. And so Noah and I would play disc golf like every day. Um, he'd do his class. I would do my work. I was working really hard during that time, yes, friend. I know. Um, and uh, and then we just played disc golf. Right or, here on campus. Yeah, here on campus yeah. or uh, lots of sellers of Catan, um, things like that. So I think that was, you know, um, a part of like, yeah, kind of our story is just connecting in that way and then getting to watch him grow and, and work through his story. I think one of the things that's really important to keep in mind is that a lot of times we forget kind of on, on the college campus, academics do come first, but a lot of times and these are 18 to 22 year olds who are working through their story, right? Mm-hmm. And, and processing through things and learning how to say, hey, this is what happened to me in childhood, or these are some of the, the, the sinful things that I've done that carried shame into my life and stuff. And so it, it's always unique because yeah, the schoolwork is hard. Union is not an easy place place to come right. but then also uh just because of our christian culture you're going to see people start working through their stories and, and doing that and that's something that i got to see noah really do and do a really great job at just asking for help uh have great friends and stuff so and i think as i hear him kind of talk about it, it's like you know you have the pressure of school engineering major pretty intense but then also like it's the first time they actually probably had time to slow down and think about their life a little bit. So I think that's important to understand that that happens on a college campus all the time. Yeah. I think what's really, what I always appreciate out of a college student and don't get to see it um, a lot, but when I do have the privilege of knowing someone that has honestly owned their story, like honestly, and not trying to hide pieces of it or diminish pieces of it, um, don't want to deal with pieces of it. I'm always, always grateful at that age in those four years. Like, listen, honestly, I didn't own my story until I was in my 40s. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference in knowing honestly who you are and what you're working through at your age versus 20 years after that and so when you get that kind of front row up close and personal insight into what a student is going through literally going through academically relationally spiritually it is probably if we if I don't know if you could like draw a picture of some very complex looking something that's taking place, I think it would overwhelm us with just how hard it really all is. And this is happening with every single person on this campus, whether they recognize it or not and are willing to look into the depths of who they are, the whole person, I think we would just sit back and be amazed at, oh my goodness, there's so much happening in our students' lives. And the fact that the Lord trusts us in some very small but yet significant way to come alongside that person's life is pretty incredible. Do we do it right all the time? No. But just the fact that Joe and I and so many others have an awareness of real lives are being transformed in these four years and it's pretty incredible Mm -hmm. so okay let's talk about Emma Kate Hare for a second when did Emma Kate the fabulous Emma Kate who's been on this show before go back and find that episode if you want to listen (laughs) to that where does she come into this um, picture into your life well she actually comes in I think right after my junior year like summer of junior year okay um And she had just gotten out of a relationship. Um, And so we started hanging out with, like, the friend group. Because, like, Nathan Golden, he was dating Hannah at the time. And they roomed together. And then I also was really good friends with Nathan. And so we start hanging out as a friend group for the first time. And 
me and Emma just hit it off. We just started talking. We just laugh all the time and just have fun. Um, we were both also captains of the Frisbee teams. Um, so that was fun, just kind of a organic way to text each other whenever we wanted to, um, <laughs> which we both enjoyed. How hey, Emma, I have a question about Frisbee. <laughs> can we can yeah. we talk later tonight? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Right. I remember texting her in class all the time. Don't <laughs> that does happen to everyone out there? You text her in class, but um, we texted all the time, uh. which is just awesome. But then, yeah, I think like I wanted to be respectful of her and her time coming out of this like relationship, junior year. Um, so I kind of gave it some space for a little while, and then by about the winter time, I was just like, I, you know, I just want to, we just want to date. And she was like, okay, I'm ready, ready Aww. to date. So I was just like, let's go. Let's do it. So um, we had a lot of fun times that junior year, um, even still. Had a lot of fun times after she graduated. Okay, so, um, but we've done more than just date. Mm-hmm. So here we are, engaged and married, g- going to be married this summer. Yep. What even the heck? Could you have ever predicted that? No. I, in a million years, I would have never guessed that I'd be marrying a girl like her. <laughs> and her in general, like, ever. I remember... Actually, so funny, funny story. You know that video they showed at the banquet? Yes. Josh the banquet? Uh, they had me talk about us being engaged there before we were engaged because I was like, hey, I'm proposing, like, next weekend to her. I actually want to, like, talk about her in, like, the like we're engaged because the video is going to come out months later. And they were oh. like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good thing to talk about. So, I, like, I'm talking about how we're engaged and how, like, the Lord's brought this incredible woman into my life. I did um, not know this. And know. she hasn't said yes yet, right? Yeah, she hadn't said yes yet. So, I was really just speaking, like, if that video had come out, we would have had to redo another one if she had said no. But um, <laughs> Oh, my gosh. That is just, that's pure gold right mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Oh, you were confident, though. Oh, you yeah. knew. Oh, I knew. Okay, I knew. so you. this is, um, we're recording this in february when did you propose i proposed november uh no july oh july Listen, july how clueless am i ninth, i believe oh. i write it down well it, it's all good <laughs> july and you're getting married in june mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's almost a year-long engagement i actually have a countdown on my phone 106 days 106 left. days 106 okay so y'all are gonna get married in june um, where are we going to live? What are we doing? You're clearly an engineer. You mm-hmm. are doing the thing that you got your degree for. Bravo mm-hmm. to you. I'm mm-hmm. still impressed. We'll always be impressed. But you're in Middle Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I'm in Nashville right now. So, I mean, that's a complicated, that's a loaded question, going to be honest. We don't know where we're going to be. Um, we're yeah, because you're to also doing this pilot thing on yeah, the side. Yeah, I don't so know what you do with that. but You, you have fly to, an airplane. Yeah, friend. I know. Hush, <laughs> hush, Joe. I get that. But, like, what are your like i love the fact because when i ask emma kate and y'all i still call her emma kate the whole world calls her emma but she's emma kate to me and Mm -hmm. she always will be but when you ask emma kate this question of like if she could see into your lives together years down the road there's always this component mentioned and i believe you talked about this on the video maybe that we're referencing um from the scholarship bank went back in october but you talk about maybe some mission work, Mm -hmm. some ministry work. And so now I'm like, okay, engineering, pilot, missions, Mm -hmm. ministry. What do you think? What, you know, like if you could create, oh man, in five years or three years or seven years or however many years, what would you like to, what would you see the two of you all doing? I could see us being out on the mission field, I believe. I think that like, I always wanted to have the reason I wanted to get an engineering degree with a pilot license was so that I could go to places that like didn't have access to God, you know, Mm -hmm. like they've never heard um, my one, my one place I was thinking, I was just like, my one place I always thought was just like around South America, like Mm. the Amazon, you know, Mm -hmm. it's just like the classic um, place to go. It's like Mm -hmm. you land a plane, you take the word there. Um, But like, honestly, we're both open to like see where we want to go, you know? Um, we don't know exactly where, but we're just praying and God's providing a way for whichever way that he wants us to go. And we both have open hands with that. That's awesome. Now, if you could just like buy your own plane and then just get on that plane whenever you wanted to, I guess there's got to be like, I don't know, some kind of ministry that's tied into all this. You can't just hop on a plane and I don't know, I guess you could. But it just sounds like there's a ministry. Yeah, yeah there there are ministries yep. out there that literally um, you don't have to have your own plane, mm. but you can mm. fly any 
plane so, that you're qualified to fly. Yes, that I'm qualified to fly. Yes, yeah. that's a big gotta, difference. Got to have the hours for it. Got to have right. the hours for it. That's you right. don't want to have me with a couple of hours flying a plane and crashing on the first day. Okay, tell me real quick, because I'm so curious. Okay. Where are you in this learning how to fly a plane process? What are you doing right now? So right now, since Tennessee weather is very yeah. bipolar, it doesn't yes. know what's happening. Right. So <laughs> I'm currently in a ground school. Okay. training and it's like an accelerated ground school course where i get 16 hours of ground school okay um to my pilot license so i need to have 40 hours of like flight time gotta have some ground school for that um but that's currently like where i'm at in this place it's and a then classroom yes with so I'm other ba- I'm people back in, yeah i'm back in the classroom there's like i think 11 of us how do you do this when you work full time um it's from 6 30 to 8 30 on monday nights so okay. it's one day a week okay um one day a week for two hours okay and then after that after after that class gets done on monday nights oh first off frisbee picks back up on monday nights so then i'll have to find another night to start actually flying the plane <laughs> so because you can't have skip you, frisbee have you been up in the plane like I haven't yet. okay mm-hmm. not at all not at all yet i just know i want to do it oh my god joe are you gonna let him fly you around <laughs> yeah absolutely Noah's one of those like responsible guys that um if he was like hey you can i f- you know fly across the country like yeah let's do it It'd be fun um yeah i'd fly him across the country but yeah any day of the week you know i think like a little two-seater like, is this what we're talking about no, it's real loud like a crop duster looking kind of plane. Yeah, like a crop duster <laughs> plane but it's like it's got four or five seats Okay. Yeah. Got to get more hours for the bigger ones, though. So. Okay. I think one of the things that's always important, like those of us who work on a college campus, you meet those like responsible students and those irresponsible Ooh, students, yeah. right? And mm-hmm. you know, and and Noah is one of those guys that, like, even probably as a freshman, I would probably hopped in a plane with. Mm. Um, I always base it on like, well, I like. Well, I get in someone's car and let mm-hmm. them drive me, right. you know, even across campus. You know, that's something. But both Noah and Imicate are super responsible. So, right. yeah, I think I, I think I could do that. Well, I'm sure we'll make that happen one day. Oh, we will, for but, sure. Uh, yeah, I think that's incredible. Like I, like because I, I'm sitting here in my mind thinking, I think that'd be so fun to do that, and I'm glad that you're doing it because I'm not going to do that now in my life. There's other <laughs> crazy things that I will do and try but it doesn't require all that work (laughs) involved um so bravo to you how long when should you have this license like you're ready to go like give us a time frame i really want to get it before the wedding shut up it's gonna occur before then i i I would like i'm thinking like a year from now however there's stuff with like the faa that i have to do yes that sounds important ride and all that stuff um so that might delay me a little while um which that would be okay Uh um but i really want to try to get those those hours in by the wedding might not happen it's a good goal i'm trying to reach but if it doesn't happen is there a possibility that at after the wedding (laughs) after the reception instead of driving off (laughs) y'all fly off right to be honest there is a long stretch of just like a field that we could oh stop that would be so cool all right so i don't know who all listens to the podcast friend but there's anyone out there who has a plane yeah or a friend with a plane let's make this happen right you know let's let's make memories and and stuff like that so that's incredible (laughs) that you would win all of everything if that took place Mm -hmm. at your wedding yeah I would stand there and just cry and cheer and carry on like a crazy person. Is your mom okay with you doing this? Because I'd be a little scared as a mom. Mm-hmm. 100%, she's okay. Yeah. Okay. Because you're trustworthy and you're you're that type of person. She's yeah. she's good. She's the one that actually um, that really got me into flying. Was she actually bought me a ticket to go skydiving? Um, and she was just like, "Do it. You know, it'll be super fun." And then they they have to show you this video before you go skydiving. And the whole video she basically said and showed you how many ways you could die. <laughs> um, and so the video got over with saying, if everything goes perfectly fine, there's still a very high chance you're going, you could die. And like, I look back at like mom and my sister who were with me and like, they're, they're just like, why did we buy this for you? <laughs> like, and I'm like, this is great. So I hey, use that story. Just um, okay. You're going to have to, um, you're going to have to tell me where to skydive in mm-hmm. middle tennessee have you or anywhere for that matter because that was on my bucket list but COVID happened so i was turning 50 in 2020 and then COVID happened mm. and i've never picked it back up so there's a place near brownsville oh really mm-hmm. like That's right down the road yeah about an hour away from here you just go right down the road they i think it's called west tennessee skydiving creative name mm-hmm. how <laughs> scared am i going to be 
Um, I think you're going to be pretty scared going up. Uh huh. But then once oh. once the plane goes like weightless is what they do, and you jump out, you realize have you been cliff diving? Yeah, but it's been a minute. Yeah. I need you to remember <laughs> my age, okay? It's been a minute. I, know, I was just saying, I was saying. I I feel like cliff diving is the closest thing. Okay. But you don't get that feeling in your stomach. Okay. Oh. You just kind of jump out of the plane, look at the plane go past you, and then you look down oh, and realize geez. you look down and realize <laughs> that like oh I have a couple thousand feet before I even get close to the ground, and you're just falling. And and you've got a guide uh-huh. that you just are p- literally putting mm-hmm. your whole life just strapped into. Yeah, I mean, if we're going, literally, we're going down, mm-hmm. but we're going to go down successfully. Yep. And so I've really got to be okay with this person. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. No, for, no for chance for I'm doing it. No chance. <laughs> no chance. Joe, what if I was your no chance? Day? Airplane, yes. I'm not jumping out of a plane. <laughs> Just because it just sounds so awful and scary and I'm not going to live? No, I just... <laughs> just not going to do it. Yeah, why Why do that to my body, you know? I know. There, you know, there are people out there that are just thrill seekers. And yeah. I'm trying to mitigate risk at all times <laughs> in my life, right? So, like, I keep my feet on the ground, but, you know, so... Yeah, no way. No but, friend, let's make it happen. Uh, <laughs> I know your audience loves you, so... But, Fans, let's make it happen. Let's get Fran to jump out of an airplane, too. This could be what we really have accomplished in this podcast today. So. Listen, so maybe true. so. Um, okay, I think we could make that happen. Is Last question about this jumping out of an airplane, and then we're done. Is there a time of year that's better to do this? Because in my mind, it's like it needs to be warmer. The, anything cold sounds like my lungs are going to freeze up, and I'm not going to be able to breathe. I, I did it, I think, in March. Mm-hmm, mm-mm. March or mm. what was it? May, April, I forget which one it comes after. Okay. Um, but there was that. I think that was the time frame I did it in, and it was cold. Like it's going to be cold once you get up in the no plane. No matter what. No matter what. Okay. So it's just kind of like. Yeah, that makes sense. You're going to jump out. You're going to be cold. But once you get back on the ground, you'll warm up. It's almost like you don't think of the cold until it's passed. Maybe somebody would sponsor me. Yeah. West Tennessee skydiving. Sponsor me to jump out of the plane. <laughs> And be your spokesperson for how awesome it is. That's so true. Um, Noah, I think you're an incredible human being. I think that, again, I will say this about you and what I appreciate about you. You came into union with a lot going on in your life. And you boldly, courageously stepped into these four years confidently understanding, willing to let people come into your life and be a part of these transformative years in every aspect of your life. And I think as I look back and as you look back, if you wouldn't have been that way, if you wouldn't have allowed people in to this harder spaces of your life, I mean, we don't know what what the Lord would have done, but the fact that you were willing to do that and let people and just says a lot about who you are. And um, I'm very grateful for how you have impacted our community and, I mean, really, truly left um, your imprint here, Mm -hmm. even after you're gone. And people that know you or don't know you, just know parts of your story, um, are very encouraged by that. So I Mm -hmm. deeply appreciate you, and I'm cheering you on always and will be – um, Joe and I both will be some of you and Emma Kate's just biggest fans. And when y'all get up and go s- serve the world and share the gospel in that plane, it's going to be an exciting time. Mm-hmm. We're very grateful for you. Well, I appreciate that. I'm grateful for Union and both of y'all for speaking to Joe, for speaking to my life and friend. The little time that I've known you, you've been awesome. I know you know Emma Kate a little bit better, but yeah. um, I'm just thankful for you too. Well, we're thankful for you. Joe? Thanks, my friend. Yeah, good good to be here. I think um, one of the things that's always fun about conversations like this is that you get to get to see people grow up. And then, like, for Noah, even for me, Noah's become, like, a really good friend. And not only has he been kind of one of those guys who uh, was open and willing to walk through difficult things in his own life, but he's also one of those kind of guys who's who's willing to kind of ask you real questions about your life and check in on you and stuff like that. So I think I think this conversation has been really great for people just to hear um, even part of, like, how a young man can grow in college and can work through a story. And, and stuff like that. So happy to be along uh, for the ride today and uh, for the conversation. 
All right, everybody. We're so grateful for you. Thanks always for listening. You can check everything um, in the show notes if you want to contact myself or Joe or even Noah. We'll provide that for you in the show notes. All right. Have a great day, everybody. We appreciate you listening to another episode of Let's Talk About That. We'll see you next time. I'm so thankful for you, Noah Simpson. What an absolute gift you are to all of us and to the people that have listened to this show. All right, you guys, have you been on campus? We'd love to have you for a campus visit. You can sign up online. Just go to uu.edu and search campus visits. And if you've already done that and you simply have not applied, y'all do not wait. Do that. I've got a fee waiver code for you. Just simply type in the word TALK, all capital letters, T-A-L-K, in the appropriate place within the application, and you do not have to pay that application fee. All right, you guys, we'll see you next time. Have a wonderful week.